In this video, I'll be talking about whether the Subaru Outback is the best choice for the outdoor enthusiast. I'll be using this 2007 Outback as my example, but I'll be talking about all Subarus, general complaints, uh, common problems that people have, uh, the all-wheel drive system, and much more. <laughs> When it comes to the great outdoors, you have many car choices, and Subaru should be at the very top of that list. And for good reason. It's reliable, comfortable, easy to drive, but really the main reason that you want to buy a Subaru is because of the all-wheel drive system. Subaru stands alone as having the best all-wheel drive system, and it's called the symmetrical all-wheel drive. And it's very different than any of the other manufacturers. The intuitive all-wheel drive system from Nissan, the real-time four-wheel drive system from Honda, the intelligent four-wheel drive by Ford, and the on-demand four-wheel drive by Toyota. Those are all more reactive or what's called slip and grip technology, whereas Subaru offers real-time all-wheel drive, and it's always feeding back 40 to 50% of the power to the rear wheels. Subaru does not consider the all-wheel drive system as an accessory, but as a real-time part of the drivetrain. When you match up the all-wheel drive system with the type of engine that Subaru uses called the Boxer engine, you have a very intriguing configuration. And one of the things that happens right away that you see from using a boxer type engine which has a very low center of gravity uh, you have the benefit of easy and predictable maneuvers in corners and emergency situations you're going to have a much more stable experience going into those situations the other benefit that relates to safety when it comes to Subarus is because the Boxer engine has such a low center of gravity in the event of a head-on crash you have much of the engine going below the body of the car rather than into the cabin. This increases your crumple zone and it makes Subaru some of the safest cars that are built. The other advantage of the Subaru Boxer engine is that it takes the power output and puts it directly into the transmission. This linear flow takes out any of the inefficiencies found in other production cars. Okay, let's talk about the uh, 2.5 engine and the Outback and all the generations that have come before. The first generation was 95 to 99, and the second generation was 2000 to 2005. The third generation was 2006 to 2009. The fourth generation was 2010 to 2015, and now we're in the fifth generation. They've used that 2.5 engine in all of these Outbacks. They all carry that same 2.5 liter engine. But you have to know that the problem years were in the very beginning from 1998 to 2003, very bad years for the head gasket failure. You really got to know your stuff. You got to always check the head gasket for possible failure. I have a video on how to check a Subaru for head gasket failures. So that was one of the problems. Now, later on, they still continued to have head gasket problems, though not nearly as much as the early years because they changed the gasket design. But it still pops up here and there. So you have that problem. Now, the next few years that you got to kind of watch out for are 2010 to 2011. They went from a timing belt to a timing chain. Now, that was a landmark event for the 2.5 engine because you don't have nearly the maintenance that you would on a timing belt engine. However, 2011 to 2013, Subaru found itself in a little bit of trouble with oil consumption. And you have to really keep your eyes on how much oil is being consumed. Uh, they even shortened the interval for the oil changes that they were recommending on the 2.5 because of that. So if anything, if you're going to have those years, keep track of oil consumption. Make sure that the oil level is always high. I change it every three or 4,000 miles instead of the recommended six, and you'll have no problems with it. The other engine types that Subaru had were the 2.0, uh, that was a turbo, and the 3.6 six-cylinder. Now, those two engines had no head gasket problems whatsoever, so it's safe to say 
that you don't have to worry about that in those engine types. However, a lot of people like the sturdiness uh, of the 2.5. Generally speaking, it's a very good engine. So let's take off and do some four wheeling and see what this puppy can do. Um, I'm not gonna do any modifications on it. We're just gonna put it to the test and see uh, how it performs out there in real world conditions. The trusted steed got us up on top of the mountain. You can kind of see the entire valley where I live. The car itself, like I said, has no modifications. I mean, this isn't a car you want to take out on a Rubicon unless, uh, you know, you did all those modifications. But we just put it through some serious pacing there, and it just drove marvelously. So kudos to Subaru for creating such a magnificent driving car for, you know, moderate outback type of terrain. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the window design here. If you're out looking for a used Subaru Outback Forester Impreza, whatever you're going to be looking for, one of the signature traits that Subaru has is you can see that it's a frameless window design. Many other manufacturers will use a frame and the reason that I'm bringing this up is because over time you'll see that this seal here all around the window, especially on the driver's side, because this door gets open and closed so much over the very long period of its life, will sag slightly. And you wanna make sure that the car you're buying doesn't have this problem. Now, if it was in a previous accident, you're going to wanna make sure all of the uh, windows seal up properly uh, on the rubber. And the way that you do that is you must test drive a Subaru on the freeway at a fast speed, listening for any sounds that can whisper inside the cabin. That will show you right there that there's a problem in that department and you wanna make sure you don't get one that has improper or poorly sealed windows. Now this being a five speed manual transmission has a variation on the symmetrical all-wheel drive system. It has a 50-50 split differential where 
Uh, other Subarus, depending on whether it's the 3.6 or it has the CVT transmission in it, would have maybe a 55, 45, or even a 60, 40 split. So there are variations within the Subaru line, but they all have the symmetrical all-wheel drive system that's very capable no matter which configuration you have. A couple of other things that you want to look out for when buying a used Subaru is the early years, really the first gen and even some of the second gens, I found that the steering racks leaked uh, pretty bad and they're not a really cheap fix. So you want to get underneath the front of the car, look at the rack, make sure that they're sealed and not leaking. I've seen a lot of that in my uh, Subaru inspections. Of course, head gasket inspection is always part of the uh, checklist there. Uh, look for also uh, tire wear, unusual tire wear, especially on the front, and that would be from worn out struts. You know, the struts on these, if they were taken off road, are going to be worked hard and you want to make sure that they're in good condition. They're not the cheapest in the world and you want to get really good ones when you replace them. So the way to know that is just look at your tire wear. That'll tell you a lot about alignment and struts. The nice thing about Subarus is they have a split personality. It might not be the best thing in a human being, but in a car, it's really nice. And what I mean by that is that uh, it has this way of being a freeway car and driving with a really good solid footprint on the ground and steady as she goes through rain, snow, dry weather. It's really a planted car and it does the highway beautifully. But then you can bring it off road and do amazing things with it. So this split personality really is an amazing feature in a Subaru and I hold that in high regard for any car that can do double duty in both of those areas. Inside the Subaru you'll see that it's wearing very well for a car with 107,000 miles on it. The door panels show very little wear. The seats are in great condition for the age. There's no rips or tears. It's a little dirty from today's activity but that's it. The dials, the knobs are all in perfect condition, the vents work great, everything is holding up very well for a car of this age. One thing I did want to bring up was that the steering wheel in its position is not really ergonomically the best for a short person. Tall people do really well in a Subaru but short people have a very hard time especially on the stick shift model so be aware of that. Now the only maintenance that I've ever done on this car, other than your regular oil changes, belts and hoses, has been doing all the fluids at 90,000 miles and then at 105,000 miles I did a timing belt kit which I also did the spark plugs. So very little maintenance for a car of this age and it's been an inexpensive car to keep. As with any car purchase, you want to do a full inspection on it. And on the Subaru, it's especially important to inspect the underside of the car. A lot of what happens off-road can damage the undercarriage. You also want to look for any oil leaks, coolant leaks, and the rack. Make sure that it's not leaking. So I have a professional in, uh, used car inspection checklist that you can find at carbuyingsupport.com. I'll share a link right here. And of course, uh, that will walk you through the inspection process on any used car that you're going to be purchasing. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. I appreciate that. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.